We're standing next to the Columbia River, which is truly the lifeblood of the Pacific Northwest. This is the gold. This is what those of us who care about cleanup at Hanford are trying to protect. But protecting the environment wasn't the priority 70 years ago when Hanford began producing plutonium for nuclear weapons. When the Hanford site was created during World War II, there was an, a sense of urgency. We were worried as a country about winning World War II, about protecting our fighting men and women. So there wasn't much thought given to the disposal of what they were, were creating. From 1940s on, this was a secret site. Townspeople remain proud of the role Hanford played in America's war effort, but a new generation is looking ahead. I've seen this area really embrace cleanup, and we have an obligation to educate our children to continue the struggle. We have to pass that baton on. It's going to go on for yet another generation. Uh, is there another way that the nuclear material could leave the Hanford site? Anyone who's been out to the site and done work for <laughs> any length of time, six months to a year or longer, uh, if they get some time to view the radioactive areas, they understand that the magnitude is, is, uh, is large as anything they've ever experienced in their life. Fortunately for Hanford, high school students seem committed to helping their community. They also realize that cleaning up contamination provides jobs and economic benefits. If that project was done, a lot of parents wouldn't have jobs, and a lot of families would have to find new jobs, and there would be a lot of concern there. So I'm, I'm kind of happy that it's still going on, honestly. There's people here, we're all really geared towards science and math, and we're, we're all really, really willing to solve our problems. I do like biology and chemistry and plan on taking three science classes next year. And it kind of is a family thing. My uncle's a microbiologist and my mom's biologist. Getting rid of decades of nuclear waste is costly and time-consuming, and there have been setbacks. But most residents understand the need for patience. I would rather have it done right than fast. Rocky Flats was a secret nuclear weapons facility. It started in 1951, and over the course of almost 40 years, Rocky Flats produced more than 70,000 plutonium pits or triggers for nuclear weapons. Each particular pit cost between four and five million dollars and contained enough breathable particles of plutonium to kill every person on the planet. My name is Kristen Iverson. I grew up in Arvada, Colorado, just a few miles from the Rocky Flats Nuclear Weaponry Facility. Uh, later, like a lot of kids in my neighborhood, I went on to work at the plant myself. I wanted to tell the story of Rocky Flats and also tell the story of my father's alcoholism. And so as a family, we were really unable to deal with my father's alcoholism, and our family was disintegrating because of it. And we also couldn't talk about Rocky Flats, and our community was disintegrating. It was deeply divided. My book, Full Body Burden, Growing Up in the Nuclear Shadow of Rocky Flats, is a weave of my own personal history and all of the dramatic things that happened at Rocky Flats over the years, much of it unknown to the public. Ultimately, I wanted to put a human face on what I felt was a very inhumane story. My parents thought they were raising their four children in the most idyllic environment. And we were outside all the time, riding our horses in the fields around Rocky Flats, swimming in Stanley Lake, which was and is contaminated with plutonium. There were many, many environmental disasters at Rocky Flats, more than 200 fires, um, extensive radioactive and toxic contamination in the soil and the water and the air. And there was huge fire at the plant. We came very, very close to a Chernobyl-like accident at that time. There's a very strong sense of family, of community, of the workers at Rocky Flats. Uh, many people, of course, were proud of the work that they did there. There were some workers who felt deeply conflicted about it, um, and others who hated their work there and, and knew what they were doing and, and didn't want to be part of it. The writing of this book and just getting the story out there uh, has made a difference in my community and also a profound uh, difference in my family. That we're all, in fact, much closer than we ever were growing up as kids.
It's really important that we remember the story of Rocky Flats. Certainly in my generation, my parents' generation, we saw a lot of health effects and cancers and thyroid issues and that sort of thing at Rocky Flats. And there have also been DNA changes. We saw a lot of things in the animals, strontium in the bones of the horses, radioactive rabbits, plutonium detected in the bodies of deer and cattle. And these are things that it's not just going to happen and then, then go away. They have long-term lingering effects well into the future. And then the broader issue is, you know, truth and transparency. And how, as citizens and as workers, can we trust our government, can we trust these private organizations to tell us the truth when they're putting our lives, our health, and even our properties at risk? For 15 years, this is where America has buried radioactive material contaminated by the nation's vast nuclear weapons industry half a mile underground in layers of ancient salt. You heard the change right there in my voice and what that is is we just entered pure salt and that salt actually absorbs the sound. Tunnels lead to rooms where the sealed waste containers are placed in holes drilled into the walls. The waste itself consists of tools, clothing, rags and other debris contaminated by plutonium. All right, right this way. There are two types, relatively low radiation contact handled waste and remote handled waste which is more radioactive. This is the remote handled waste that's already been disposed of. These are pre-drilled boreholes, then we come and we insert the RH waste canister into the hole and then we put this concrete shield plug to protect us and the workers as they walk by the holes from any radiation exposure that may be present. Once it arrives here, it will never see the light of day again. Nobody's ever actually done this before, so how do you know that this will contain the waste for thousands of years to come? Because this formation is 250 million years old, there's no reason to believe it won't continue to be here for another 250 million years. We're 2,150 feet underground, and we're still 1,000 feet above sea level at this depth. The only way you're going to do anything to impact the capabilities of this facility to protect human health and the environment for an extended period of time would be to get some way where you'd have water intrusion. And because of our height still above sea level, you wouldn't expect that to happen. Salt is the key to nuclear waste disposal because of its natural ability to encase objects. This is pure salt, and because of the way the formation moves, scientists reckon that within about 100 years, this hole will have completely sealed. And within another 10,000 years, not that we'll ever know, any evidence of this whole site will have completely vanished. So this is panel 7, room 7. This is the active disposal panel right now for remote handle waste. And as you can see down at the far end of this room, that's where we're going to begin remote handled waste emplacement in this panel. We'll work our way up this room, go to the next room and just keep filling room for room until we're done with panel 7 and then we'll move into panel 8. But room 7 is where something caused a radioactive leak in February. Operations have been halted while investigations continue, and despite its otherwise unblemished safety record, the long-term future of this site is now in question.
feature I got this monkey He sits on top of me Spouting nonsense Spouting nonsense Don't give away Your position Don't pretend that You're not a person I got this elephant And she's in the room Her name is uh oh Her name is uh oh This two and a half minute long session of immersion therapy is finally complete. Your crippling fear of watching video news recaps should no longer be a problem. Thank you very much, everybody.